Welcome to the Man Cave. It's the only podcast hosted by two best friends with just nothing in common except their first names. I'm Mandy Fabian. And I'm Mandy Kaplan. And each week we test the limits of our friendship by debating over the latest podcasts and movies and hot topics. So grab a couch and let's get to it. Cut this shit. Yeah, it goes. Oh, and Scandivals. Yeah, I'm still into it. I know you're still loving it. It was good. It was it was mm-hmm. very, you know, enlightening for me. That was like I'm opening myself up to new experiences. Like I said, never going to watch it again. But I really still stand behind the fact that I would put Tom Sandoval in my pocket and listen to him talk about just about anything. Um, we So gross. We also go deep, guys. We go into our feelings. I have something I would like to share. That I saw. Okay. 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 This week, I saw a movie. I can't... Well, of course, I can imagine why I watched it. I had all these movies to choose from, and I chose um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. That was a book that then they Mm -hmm. decided to make into a feature documentary where this guy, I believe his name is Mike Manson or Mike Munson. I'm so sorry. I have to figure that out. Uh... I'll look it up right now. Subtle art. I just wrote subtle fuck. That's not right. Mark Manson is the guy's name. He wrote a book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, and then they made a movie. And I remember liking the book, but it wasn't like transformative, Mm -hmm. you know. This Mm documentary is really interesting. I mean, it's he's a good storyteller. He has these life theories about all of us being overachievers and um, being told that we're special and we're entitled, and that life is going to go really well for us if we just do these certain things. And his whole Mm -hmm. philosophy is like, no, not the case. Uh, It's not about life being happy. It's about deciding what is worth you suffering for. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's it's clever. He's really charming and interesting, I think. And they do a lot of really cool visuals. So I expected to roll my eyes and be like, eh. or or at least I should say, I expected it to be the kind of movie that only I would watch because, uh-huh. but I think it's actually really good. Oh, good. Yeah. So I'm sharing that for the fandies. I highly, highly recommend it. He has a very straightforward, interesting... Where did you watch it? Well, I watched it on a plane, but I'm sure it's out because it was released. It's oh. a 2022 movie. Um, and it's just... It was very refreshing and interesting. And he tells a lot of really interesting stories. So there you go. The subtle art of not giving a fuck. Talks about all the fucks you give. And uh, it's uh, it's really good. I liked it a lot. Great. Well, Jar and I watched the newest Wanda Sykes special. Oh. And my love for her only deepened. And it was lots of good laughs, lots of really pointed, you know, uh, thoughts and opinions about the state of the world, but she never loses her humor. She's just yeah, oh, in a league of her own. I love Wanda Sykes. I agree. I think her so. stand up is phenomenal. I do think she's one of those stand ups that, like, I think I prefer her stand up to when she's acting. Like, she's really good. She's very funny, but she's always Wanda Sykes, right? She's not. I don't think she's yes. an incredible <laughs> actress, but her comedy. I, I'm such a fan. I she is a surefire hit in everything she does to me. Yeah, no, she, I just love her. Yeah, she's great. But she's, she, you're right, she is Wanda Sykes. Yes. In everything. But her stand-up yeah. is, because she's Wanda Sykes, so smart, oh, so insightful. So good. I love her point of view. Yeah. I, yeah, she's amazing. Oh, good. Is that on Netflix? Yep. Dang. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, good. And I I started the other two from the beginning, which is something that I used to watch, and then I fell yeah. off and now I've started it over. Wow. And she's on that and she's so funny. The writing is so yeah. funny on that mm-hmm. show. And um I'm really enjoying it. Now I'm almost done and I'm sad that I'll be done with season three. So Oh, what did you think of the beginning of season three? Because I had watched the first two and was just like, I mean I binged. It was just I loved them. And then I yeah. watched the first episode of season three and I thought it was very you know, you thought that Ted Lasso kind of went off into a different direction. Mm-hmm. The beginning of season mm-hmm. three goes really wacky. It does, but I it but it made me laugh, so I still went with it. I definitely wasn't as emotionally invested because it's it's odd. Yeah. That it's when um Carry his movies come out and he's right and yeah 
is trying yeah. to find love. It's just it. I, one complaint I have about the other two is they do the same storyline over and over and over where mm-hmm. he's on the precipice of something good and it all comes crashing down and then it yeah. happens again next week. I, I get frustrated with that because I care about him and I want him to succeed and <laughs> I'm a little sick of having the wind taken out of my sails. But I'm still just such a fan of every performer on it and the writing. The jokes are so sharp. Yeah, I agree. So, but I also think like they can't have him succeed because then it would be show over. Like the whole point is how horribly he fails and flails. Like I like that. I don't want him to do well. Yeah. I guess I just don't want the same arc each episode. Almost, almost, almost. No. Uh, you know, right, 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 right. If they could find a different way to tell it or ex- extend well, the failure or I speak from experience here, like when you are really talented, <laughs> like yeah. that's what happens. I mean, you get really close and it all looks great and then it doesn't go that way, you know. But if you right. watch this wonderful feature documentary about the subtle art of not giving a fuck, you'll understand how to handle it when your character doesn't you know, when his right. dreams don't come true exactly the way that he'd hoped. It's all in there. I mean, we have, this is going to be a wonderful, what a beautiful, balance. full circle yeah. moment for you. To, You're to welcome. Connect everyone. on that. Yeah. <laughs> if you wouldn't, uh, I'll be posting links to my TED Talk also in the Discord, which is our Great. chat. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm totally fixed now, which is great because. Great. We've talked a lot about my mental problems and. <laughs> Now, clearly, you're, uh, you've got a new show, which is, it's always lonely. I'm, I'm realizing that I haven't been watching any shows because I'm traveling quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And I don't mm-hmm. ever, but I don't really have, I don't even know what's next. I think Jury Duty, the one you recommended a couple weeks ago. Yes, you won't be sorry. I got a weird stomach bug a few days ago. Oh. And I just felt real nauseous and I had fever and chills. It was thankfully just a quick 36 hours where I... Just not myself. And I was really, look. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I even stated on the podcast, I wish I got sick so I could watch the Smartless show. Yes. And I went to press play on it. And I thought, I have no desire to watch more of this. <gasps> Ooh, to watch more of these guys talking about what they're going to eat and all of their white privilege. I just, I, so I switched to the other two. <laughs> and I watched their white privilege. Two full seasons. And I watched their white privilege. Yeah. But... <laughs> I just, yeah, you know, yeah. I found that interesting. I didn't feel driven to go back to it. So, yeah, I'm sorry, think, Smartless. Yeah, sorry, Smartless. I uh, I have that same thing. I don't get sick often enough for my liking because, well, when I get sick, though, I can't right. watch television. That's the thing. I know. I'm either yeah. not sick and I can't do it or I'm so sick. I can't even open my eyes. <laughs> I could be drawn and quartered and I would still have my eyes on a television. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was quite an image. Thank you. <laughs> Very old. I've had my coffee. I know. You're espressoed yeah. up. Yeah. Um, well, uh, should we... I, speaking of drawn and quarters or, sh- or maybe even filleted, Huh? Uh-huh. Huh? Something like that? Uh-huh. Um, we, I asked you, well, I commanded you to go yes. out into the movie theater, which is such a great thing, uh, to see The Little Mermaid, live action Little yes. Mermaid in theaters now. And, um, and I just have to say, I straight up love going to the movies in a way that I did not fully appreciate before COVID. I love it. I loved it before, but I didn't make it a priority. And now I'm so in love with the whole experience. I'm so excited when I get to go into a movie theater. I buy the popcorn. I I have I'm a I'm an AMC Stubbs member. I got a Regal membership. Yep. Like I'm all about it. I, I yours is my favorite because we get to have a beer. We get to buy the beer and take it into the movie theater. And my movie theater is just Yeah, it's great. It's just uh, incredible. I would I'm move so... to your neighborhood just so I could go to that movie theater. Let's all do the time. that. Yeah. I think Let's it's a great do... idea. I love it there. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go there by myself to see this movie, which is oh. a treat. I like going to movies by myself. I just love it. So, uh, yes, if go see as many movies as you can. That's our public service announcement. Um, and then lo and behold, go some good trailers of interesting new movies. Mm-hmm. I can't remember one of them, but yeah. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> so terrible. Let's... But I know. 
but you know what? I, no, but there was, you know, well, the one that I do want to see, though, is uh, You Hurt My Feelings. Have you seen the trailer for that? The yes. Nicole Hollis and, Center? Yeah, I'm dying to see it. I'm dying to see it, too. Oh, maybe yeah. we make that a bonus episode or something, or we figure that okay. out. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. But anyway, back to not the big mermaid, Nicole Hollis Center, who's a mysterious creature who gets to make her movies no matter what. But um, The Little Mermaid, what did you think? I didn't feel a need for this remake, as I yeah. have not felt a need. The Little Mermaid is perfect from 89 or wherever it was from. But yeah. Why did we need to remake it? And God help me, Mandy Fabian, I don't need to see CGI ever again. I don't care for CGI. Yeah. So all of the stuff with their beautiful faces and then their bodies being animated behind them in the water. And I know that's all technically brilliant and incredible. And I was turned off by all of it. Th yeah. That's just my instinct. I don't want yeah. CGI. I like animation and I like real people. I don't yeah. care for the in-between stuff, even though yeah. it was beautiful. I I almost accepted right away, oh, this isn't going to be for me because it's like watching the musical Avatar, I guess. I'm not into this. But yep. once I just accepted that, then I tried to go on the ride and enjoy the performances and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, just enjoy what I could enjoy. There was a moment. I think this kind of sums up the experience for me. There was a moment when, and I'm not, this isn't a spoiler alert, because if you haven't seen The Little Mermaid by now, shame right. on you. Go, go mm -hmm, watch it. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I mean, and I mean the original. Uh, but mm -hmm. there's the moment when, in this version, Triton, you know, you think he's died, like he, when he gets crumbled into the little shrimp or whatever, Ursula does her thing and mm -hmm. Triton drifts back in this really horrible, dissolves way. <laughs> a child started to cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's about right. That's kind of how I feel about this. Like, I I don't want it to be a drama. Mm -hmm. I don't want The Little Mermaid to feel... Now, but this is... And it felt to me very much like I was like, wait, so none of the laughs were really played for. I don't think... Like, they, there were the jokes still in there from the original, but they didn't play them like jokes. They weren't, like, landed as jokes. Everything was sort of just... Sort of mm -hmm. very realistic, very, it felt more like a drama to me. Right. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and I guess without CGI, there's no way to even do the live action Little Mermaid, right? Like how right. would you even half the movies underwater? So I I understand that. And I'm I'm with you. I, like I'm with you. I can totally recognize the beauty of it. And like how extraordinary. There was a moment where I was like, I really feel like I'm scuba diving. Mm -hmm. And also I'm getting a little seasick moving mm -hmm. around the camera, <laughs> swirling and mm -hmm. following all the fish in the water. Like it was a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And it made me a little nauseous. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like, well, wait, it's not really a comedy. It's very dramatic. And it, yeah. I was like, are they trying to sort of compete with Marvel movies? Like, are they trying to up the ante of the look and the violence and the art of it? You know, like, I and also, I'm not a big fantasy person. Like, I, I, w I didn't love, like, Game of Thrones. I'm not, you know, like, I, I, right. I didn't watch, like, the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit or... Right. I, I, I'm not super into fantasy storylines, right. really, anyway. It felt more of that ilk rather than the magical, uplifting, animated original you know yes. that, that yeah you're right they it were was dipping maybe... into that darker yeah it opens with this massive ship in a storm where handsome prince mm -hmm. eric is on the ship but it's very yes dark and gritty and the people on the ship it's it's like pirates of the caribbean and they're very dirty and it just i thought what if you brought your six-year-old kid to this thinking yes the little mermaid it didn't feel like it was made for children. I agree. You know, I agree. I actually That's, called they were... Megan and said, don't bring your girls. They will be terrified of this movie. Don't bring your girls. Oh, yeah. The imagery, especially at the end when Ursula and Triton get into it. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is kind of terrifying. I would be so mad if I brought my little kid to this. Right. In and Disney movies, the animated ones have those moments for sure. But. They, there's something about that simple animation that makes them feel a little removed and safer. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. No, this was, this was, 
the the real faces. And also even, even King Triton at Javier Bardem as King Triton was just completely joyless. Like he mm-hmm. played the role like a man with the weight of running a kingdom on his shoulders. Right. And I don't know that it was necessary. Like I was kind of like, to what end? Does that raise the stakes of his relationship with his daughter? Like in the in the animated version, he's like, Oh, uh, kind of a dad struggling to figure yeah. out how to make this work. He has a, a rambunctious teen and he's frustrated. But this felt like the, the you know. Too the, serious. The, uh, what am I trying to say? The ancestry, like the centuries of teen girls going in the, and there was a whole thing about like, those are not our people. We don't, which, which could have been cool if that mm-hmm. really was the issue. I don't think it was serviced. It was like, they didn't go far enough with the whole, like, we don't mix with humans and here's why. Right. I even thought the animated thing dealt with that better than, but they tried to stick it in more like on the human side. Prince Eric has a mom, the queen, mm-hmm. who it talks about we don't mix with sea people and the sea gods. But it was, I feel like it was all kind of like dabbled in to make it different, but I, I, it didn't really go there. It kind of didn't know what it wanted to be, right? Yeah, it was heavy. It just yeah, very um, heavy. <laughs> and it starts with I don't remember how many sisters she has in the animated movie, but in this yeah. movie she's got seven supermodel multiracial sisters <laughs> with yeah. no payoff and no point. Yes. So that's when right. I saw them all in the movie, when once they go under sea, it starts with all these beautiful supermodel mermaids arriving for a meeting with Dad, and I thought, I wonder if they're going to get a beautiful musical number. Where we hear all these voices and no, no, they were eye candy. It felt really very forced. I I loved the colorblind casting. I love Halle Bailey as Ariel and that Prince Eric's mom is a black queen. I love that. But having this rainbow of different sisters with no point or purpose. Yeah, just they just felt are I can't forced. Yeah. And let's compare it to the original. Let's see. You asked, um, you don't remember how many sisters. Well, we are the daughters of Triton, great father who loved us and named us well. Aquata, Arista, Atina, Adela, Alana, and then Ariel's the sixth. So there are five. Just wanted to answer that question. <laughs> I so appreciate the musical answer. You are uh-huh. the mom of daughters who probably watched Little Mermaid a lot. Oh, honey. Uh, I am a Vassar grad who was in my house with my fellow housemates singing The Little Mermaid, oh. turned up as loud as we oh. could. We oh. sang all of it. Yeah, I know oh. every word of every song. I thought maybe you were also a super fan, but I... No. Oh, yeah, no. I loved this movie in high school, oh. college, all of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not awkward at all. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> Went to a Little Mermaid sing-along, and that's when Patrick and I decided to have children. Oh. We were on the fence about it, and then there was a Little Mermaid sing-along at the El Capitan Theater. And, of course, we were like, gotta get tickets! And we go, and we realize we're maybe four, one of four, two of four people who don't have children who are there. Right. There was us, there were, like, college-age girls, who obviously was a nostalgic thing for them, and then and there a were few only priests. families. No, I'm Yeah, just and a couple of priests. Yeah. yeah. And after that, we were like, well, it's not like we would have to change what we do for fun. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's fan. adorable. Okay. I'm not a Disney file by any means. I love a lot no. of Disney and I think it's yeah. really well done and beautiful. I actually, this is controversial, Mandy. Okay. I like the live action Beauty and the Beast. And I would prefer that to this any day. And I know oh. people weren't so crazy about it, but I really liked it. Uh, although Emma it? Watson is not a singer. But yeah. she's lovely. Yeah. yeah, I do remember that. I feel like we talked about it on the podcast because I did feel that way. I didn't think she was very, I don't think she was very good. But well, yes, it was interesting. Yes. I mean, you know, for parents, it's sort of like a two-hour babysitter, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. Okay, two hours and 15 minutes for this movie? No. Mm. Mm-hmm. It did not need to be that long. No, too it, much. It, and it really, 
yeah, it really, it's like, it's too bad because it was such a staple. But I wonder, do you know anything about the original Little Mermaid story? Like, isn't it like a Hans Christian Andersen mm-hmm. kind of? Mm-hmm. And and those are typically dark, right? Cinderella is mm-hmm. much darker than the Disney version. Right. So I wonder how dark the original was. And if there was somebody over at Disney that was like, let's make this cool and dark, kind of like, and then I thought of Cruella, right? Wasn't that mm-hmm. kind of a dark film? I didn't I see didn't it. I didn't see it. Oh, uh-huh. well, I heard it was amazing. My kids definitely wanted to see it. And it's, but it's dark. Oh, okay. And so maybe they're trying to sort of meet the teenager. We have our own phones and we'll watch anything kind of category now. Like maybe that's the- fine, but don't do it with the Little Mermaid. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and and yes, the Hans Christian Andersen is darker. And yeah, I, I guess it, I just this didn't speak to me in the same way. That oh, God, no. I wanted it to. However, I want to talk about some of these performances because some of them I found outstanding. Yeah. Mainly, David Diggs as Sebastian the Crab. I thought he was... You didn't like him? I did not. No. I felt like that didn't pay off at all because I think Sebastian is supposed to be funny. And I feel like all of his... He he didn't have a musicality to him. I felt like he was kind of just doing this one thing the whole time. I didn't think he landed the jokes. I also didn't think that Aquafina was great as Scuttle. Like, I I didn't think that their their parts didn't make me laugh. I hate so, to correct you, man. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Scuttle was played by Fran Drescher. <laughs> Don't they sound exactly alike? <laughs> I knew That's it was funny. Aquafina, but the whole time I'm like, this. <laughs> you, if you told me, no, Aquafina dropped out, this is Fran Drescher, I would believe it in a heartbeat. <laughs> they sound That's so funny. much alike. Yeah, they do kind of. I never noticed that before. Yeah. Uh, no, Aquafina was a misfire as Scuttle. Yeah. yeah. It was just kind of, they, they didn't, it wasn't like pow, joke, pow. Like it also, again, though, maybe they weren't directed that way because it, they were clearly were not trying to do a lighthearted comedy at all. At all. But you would think the lighthearted moments would have a little more zing. And I just felt like it was very, it, there I wasn't got a those rhythm from Debbie communi- Diggs. Oh, I did okay. like I did like his character. I found Sebastian lovable, and mm, when he okay. would mutter okay. to himself, I laughed. I liked oh, I liked Dovey Diggs a lot. Um, Good. So, Good. what a shock! We disagree. What did you think of <laughs> uh, Melissa McCarthy? I thought she did a great job. She was very grounded. You know, again, she had a couple of comedic moments, but really just a couple. Mm-hmm. And I, and I thought Ursula was so funny. In the original, in the the original Disney version, mm-hmm. that I was disappointed because it's Melissa McCarthy. I want her to do. I, I disappointed only because of that. Like I, I think she nailed it. I think she did a great job. I, but I, I was like, impressed. And also, her whole thing is so expositiony. My God. Yeah. She just had to lay out so much character backstory and stuff, but in a not interesting, fun way. Like I wanted her to be a little more bratty, a little more like. Uh, wild and charactery, and she was just like very grounded, like a woman who had been really hurt by her brother, mm-hmm. and you know wanted to get revenge and get this little, uh, you know, get the little little red. She called her. I loved her vocal choice. Yeah, she was slightly British and almost Lauren Bacall, and yeah. I liked it. That's not how we hear Melissa McCarthy at all. Yeah. She, I thought it was a a very invested performance. Yeah. I enjoyed that. In terms of singing, uh, she didn't try to oversing it. I think she nailed it for the kind of singer she must be, which I'm not familiar with. But I thought, is she going to, you know, at times Meryl Streep tries to go for it in ways that she's really not vocally capable of. And Melissa McCarthy didn't do that. You know, she yelled when she needed to yell. She hit the right notes and she kept it straightforward. So yeah. I admire that. Yeah, she was always very in character. She did a a great job for what it was. Mm -hmm. It was just, again, like, I felt like they sucked all of the feel good and all of the fun out of the movie. Like, I thought Ursula is a delightful character. Mm -hmm. She's such a bad guy you love to you love to love. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and and she was just more of a straightforward bad guy. I, again, I don't think that's a criticism of her. I think that was just the choice that the movie was making. And I kind of sucked the fun out of it for me. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I also, the fun of Ariel loving the human world so much was just very, 
it wasn't playful and comedic. She was genuinely in awe of looking how things worked. And and Mm -hmm. I will say, for whatever reason, I got kind of choked up when she was singing Part of Your World because that wasn't like that was a very serious like she had angst in her heart because she was in the wrong place and she mm-hmm. wanted to be up there. Mm-hmm. And it and I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm like, wow, I never thought of that as like a dramatic song. But again, not played for all of the comedic part beats, you know? Right. Right. Like, yeah, uh, the. Halle Bailey was very straightforward and yeah. very lovely. I'm mm-hmm. not sure she's got comedic chops. I'm not sure she's got the energy and the the lightness because I don't think she was directed that way. And I don't know if she has it. I don't know Halle Bailey. What I don't either. Um, but boy, she has this wide eyed, shining light of a face. I mean, absolutely. In terms of being instantly lovable. My God, mm-hmm. she definitely has that. But I agree with oh, you. Oh, so she's from Grownish, is her main claim to fame. Oh, okay. The spinoff That's a freeform Black. show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when Part of Your World started, she was mm-hmm. doing a lovely princess voice. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, she can, she can sing. She sounds nice. This is nice. And I was a bit disappointed. Yeah. Then they let her unleash, and she can sing. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So let her be a pop singer. Don't force her into this box of you must sound light and airy. And when she hit a I big, agree. huge, grand note, it was gorgeous. And then yeah. she did a few things melodically that were different. Let her do that. Don't cram her into a box and say you yeah. should sound like Jody Benson. I, it was yeah, frustrating. I agree. Uh, what do you think of Prince Eric? How about that? Okay, so he has that number on the beach where he's singing... <laughs> Oh, looking for his. I do feel like this. I died. I was so mad. I was like, oh, my God. Did you give all of the characters and all the people songs just because you had to or they wouldn't do the movie? Like when Aquafina and Debbie Diggs had their song, I was like, their oh. terrible Lin Manuel rap. Yes. Oh. I was like, oh, my God, please. No, I can't. <laughs> I was like, no. Yeah. I well, didn't like that song. I didn't love him singing about looking for his love on the beach because also. I mean, the whole, by the way, this is not a woke movie. This is not a woke storyline. This is a young girl who is like, I'm in love with a boy. I'm going to give up all of my gifts and give up everything I have to go live in his planet and hope that he loves me enough to kiss me and marry me and make me a bride so that I can be happy. I Mm -hmm. mean, it's a terrible message, which is why you kind of have to not take it too seriously. You know what I mean? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the Little Mermaid. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. You go, it is what it is. Um, I thought he was pretty. Very pretty. I, I prefer the original Prince Eric. I thought the original <laughs> Prince Eric was dreamy. I was very into him. <laughs> well, he was a little more playful. This mm-hmm. Prince Eric, you know, they gave him a backstory about how he was found from a shipwreck, I guess, and he was adopted. And so mm-hmm. they wanted to make him a king, but he really was sort of ambivalent about the whole thing. He didn't feel like he belonged there. And mm-hmm. he had a lot of hurt in his eyes, especially when he was when he was looking for that mystery woman. I mean, it was like haunting him day at night. They really went with the whole, the mermaid does a siren song, and then he's really like aching and he can't think of anything. But, but I couldn't tell. I was like, wait, do they not want him to look for her or do they want him to look for her? Like it was, again, it was like, I don't know, is the siren song the thing that's making him wander on the shores and sing that, sing that song with the wind in his hair? They explained it a little better than the original, I think, that he was out of it when he woke up on the beach saved, but yeah. he was drawn to this siren song. So then when yes. this woman appears and, and can't talk, he doesn't equate because he was out of it on the beach and he only really remembers the song. So I thought that was justified. Um, but who cares? Ugh, who cares? <laughs> there was a moment, I will say, there were times when I was like, oh, look, that's from the original and that's done pretty well. Like, I actually thought the under the sea number was was really good. Mm-hmm. Like, I enjoyed that number. Mm-hmm. I thought they nailed it. That's like, oh, okay, this is from the original, but they they actually, it fulfilled it and went above and beyond. The moment where she sings when he's on the beach and she like lifts herself up on the rock. And the water splashes. I was like, no. (laughs) Uh -uh. Nope. They should have picked something else. Because in the movie, of course, you know, 
in the animated version, she lifts up and the sun is behind her and the, her hair is waving and the waves are perfect. But in this version, she just looked really awkward trying to like bend backwards on an actual rock with her tail behind her and she mm-hmm. didn't look comfortable. And it was like, <laughs> nope, nope, we should have picked something else for her. Yeah. <laughs> There were moments like that. I was like, oh, that's too bad. Even the dingle hopper moment where she's brushing her hair with the fork. And instead of being with the prince and the queen, she's with a bunch of people at the market. They're characters we've never met before. And it's like, well, how is that? I don't understand. Also, why did they add the the part? uh, We're totally spoiler alert now. But they add this whole storyline that she's not going to be allowed to remember that she's supposed to kiss the prince. I didn't know if that was part. I, I don't remember the original. So, oh, that's not part of it. But, you know, it does make me wonder, maybe that's part of the original original, like right. the actual Little Mermaid myth, mm-hmm. because it was in there and I couldn't figure out why. Like, why? And I thought, is it a feminist thing? Like, they don't want her trying to seduce him. Is that part of like what they were trying to take out that just he has to think of kissing her? But I couldn't. I really I don't know why they did that. It must have been in the original. I'll do some research. Fran, mm-hmm. can you get on that? As these topics are popping up, I'm like, eh, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. yeah. I, not me. Which is sad. Yeah. I, you know, I know that there is some controversy because disgusting right wing bigots are mad that a black woman was cast as Ariel and they want more right. traditional all white casting. So I've heard that people are those awful people are going mm-hmm. and giving it zero stars to try to drive down its reviews and drive down oh, its... Oh, my God. It's resp- Right? I mean, <sighs> there. Oh. I can't remember the name of... There's a term for it, like review diving Trolling. or something. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, but um, I loved how colorblind it was. It, yeah. I loved it. To me, it, sound, it seemed like they found this perfect young woman to play Ariel. And it didn't matter oh. what, what her skin was or anything. And it didn't matter that her dad was white. And it didn't matter that the queen was black. It just was, we're going to cast the people we yeah. want that deserve these parts. And I loved that. I just wish it all sang more so it would change the world. And it just feels like it didn't. It yeah. didn't move the needle I, for me. Well, isn't there always more pressure on, like, if you take a, a risk, right, like, if Hamilton had been a flop, mm-hmm. that wouldn't have been great, right? Mm-hmm. People would have gone, well, that's it just goes to show you, you can't have a black man playing George Washington, right. you know? But it was right. so, it was such a perfectly evolved vision, you know, mm-hmm. and it and it was hugely successful. So there you go. But anytime you take a risk like that and then the actual thing doesn't quite come together, which is going to happen with any kind of movie, but it's like the stakes feel higher when that stuff yeah. happens. You yeah. know, but I agree with you. I I thought the casting was great, and I love that they did that. You know, I, I really mm-hmm. love that. That's not why I wasn't thrilled with the movie. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. It's just it really was just that thing, and I really it really makes me want to like. I'm curious about Rob Marshall. He's such a talented director, and I I definitely saw his vision in this. But it was the tone of it that I thought. Again, it just feels like they tried to make it a little more like not quite so young and middle grade, but more mm-hmm. young adulty because those books are really pushing it with the imagery and the and the thing that's the fantasy world stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think that's they were going for maybe a different audience with this because they already have the animated one for the little kids. If that's what it felt like to me, they were making that like a be. work of art. But it but it it took out to me what's winning about that story. <laughs> <laughs> but then it should have been like how they made Maleficent, which is pretty dark. This should have been Ursula, you know, and then that would have been. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yes. You know, oh, I, I see. Liked that. I get it. Why they're going so dark because it's about that's not a bad idea to do a movie just from Ursula's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, actually. Yeah. Get working on it. Well, OK, okay so do you want to give it uh, man jobs? Yes, but I feel bad because I want to give it two point five or two 2.25 yeah out of five yeah i would um i mean i would give it three and that's only because i got to eat popcorn and you get to see it in the theater and it is beautiful like it's very yeah a couple of the scenes are like so opulent and really really great 
But right, but yes. my theater was packed with kids who were not laughing. No, they weren't you know? enjoying it. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So no, nope. I'm with you. My kids loved it, but you know, as we have established before. <laughs> oh, I am gonna. Oh, did they really love it? Yeah, they. Yeah, they they love everything. It's a movie. Someone mm-hmm. makes stuff happen, and there's characters talking, and they're pretty. And Delilah was crying at the end. Like, loved it. All right. Well, the I, the end is when. King Triton has to say goodbye to her and he has to let her go. And I was moved because of Casey turning 13 and starting to think about, you know, he's going to go off to college. And that is a Aww. huge moment. Um, yeah. So I was moved by the thought of letting your child go and, and yes. out into the world. That's. Yeah, they have all really of the mer of people and the mm-hmm. humans all together. That's interesting. I will say all of the mer people, it was really interesting because I was like, oh, it's like a Ren fair. I mean, yeah. they look like the mer people to me really looked like humans with makeup on them. They did not look like sea people. <laughs> right. Um, and there is a new documentary <laughs> series about mer people. This is a big trend like the Ren fair. You <gasps> just made me think of it. Um, oh, Really? It's called Mer People. Welcome people to the whimsical who... world of professional mermaiding, where people's passion for swimming and fins has exploded into a half billion dollar industry. Oh my God. I am totally looking into this. Not that I want Not to be a mermaid. For me. Right. <laughs> Last time I went in the ocean, I was like clinging to it was so cold. I was clinging to the boogie board like a cat. Like <laughs> I don't like to get wet. <laughs> Uh, but I love that. Well, you know, then those people should definitely go to see this. That last scene alone is worth the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Not for me. Well, I have a game for you, per usual. Excellent. But and, we uh, should do our business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. After, well, so Man Cave is a production, guys, of True Story <laughs> FM. Music by Ian Post. Engineering by Pete Wright. And hey, go ahead and push that little purple button, podcast button. If you go to Apple Podcasts, you can leave us a, a review and give us a rating. We would really appreciate it. We love hearing from you. And it 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 helps our, uh, it helps us grow. It, and, you know, because everyone's a follower, guys. So why don't, why shouldn't they follow you? And join us on Discord at mancave.com slash Discord, where we chat with our people and post funny stuff. And if you want to get access to our secret Discord channel and lots more fun stuff, go to mancave.com slash Fandy and become a Fandy for five bucks a month. We love our Fandies. Super easy. Like, it cost less than hair removal. Think about that. I wouldn't know. Oh, boy. I wouldn't know. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, no wonder we have different perspectives on the world. I've been fighting a rainforest my whole life, you know? Oh, boy. Um, okay. <laughs> that was a visual. All <laughs> right. So, I think, and hey, isn't this, we should acknowledge this is it, right? This is the end this of the season. What season are we in? Three, four? Four. Four. I God think. damn, we are sexy. Um, <laughs> hopefully, we'll get picked up for a fifth. Uh, thank you guys all for, you know, listening and for your support. We're going to have some bonus stuff coming out for Fandies this summer. We've already talked about what that's going to be. So that's great. And so um, become a Fandy, guys. Yeah. Do it now. Yeah. Go, go get after it. Get after it. You'll feel glad that you did. Okay. Um, the game we're going to play is just, I thought this was the simplest thing. And I also got excited about where this might go. It's the title game that you and I played ages ago that made one of my most favorite Man Cave t-shirts that I have. Yes. Um, And now, so we have the Little Mermaid to start, Yeah. right? And Uh I want to, I don't even know how to do this, but you usually write it down, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm writing down the Little Mermaid, and -hmm. then I would like to hear where you would like to go with it. Little add, Mermaid of Honor. Little Mermaid of Honor. Okay. And I'm going to do um, Here Come the Little, with a little S, Little's mm-hmm. Mermaid of Honor. Here come, uh, By the way, how lovely. I had forgotten about that movie. Uh, and, and, but did you ever watch Here Come the Little's? Mm-mm. Oh, my God. It was, it was like... It's not a very popular movie. It's not famous. I hadn't heard of it in years. But when I was thinking about this, I was like, the littles, the littles, they were a thing. And it was, it was this movie that I lived when I was a kid about little people, like little tiny people that live in the walls and like eat 
like they're they're friendly. They're fun, like, you know, like little mice, except they're actually little people, like little foreign people. It's so cute as they have little ears, like little elves. I, and when oh. I was a kid, when I was a kid, I used to like imagine that I had littles living in my house. How about that? Anyway, here come the littles. <laughs> it is not familiar to me. I feel like that was a an acid trip that you went on when you were little. <laughs> oh, wait, it was um, a bastard. Sorry, it wasn't when I was little. <laughs> well, uh, here come the Little Mermaid of On Normal People. Oh, dang, that's so good. Normal people. Oh, God, I feel like there's a people who drink. Isn't there a people who drink movie? Okay, maybe not. Maybe is know. be isn't being here a movie? That sounds right. Or you are here. Let's do you are here. That's definitely you are a movie. here. Mm-hmm. Only you are here. Come the Little <sighs> Mermaid of our normal people. Oh, that's so good. Uh, uh, I wish we could do. Oh, you can't flip flop titles, can you? People pull. Pull my finger. <laughs> no? All right. Um, only, only. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, what? People like us. Yes, that's right. People like us. I love it. People like us. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, no. Uh. What was the first part? Is there like what a is bone? It? Oh. It's only you. So it's only you are here come the little mermaid of honor. Oh, wait. I'm on normal uh people. Oh, thank you. Honor, norm, on normal people like us. (laughs) I got stuck there. I was like, what? Normal people like us. Oh, God, this is tough. Is there an own or bone or uh, is there something that ends the bone or phone? Or, oh, because it's only you. Oh, I see. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Maybe there's a <laughs> jeepers. Home alone,ly you. Oh yes. Woo! Oh my god, that is genius. You are so good at this. Um, isn't there like a long way home? Or what's the one with the cats and the dogs? <gasps> Homeward Bound. Oh but, shoot! But there's okay. um, a long walk home. I think. Yes, there is. Oh, my God. We've got a long walk home, a lonely you are here come the little mermaid of honor, normal people like us. That's a really good one. Wait, we're done? Well, I don't know. We can keep going. What was I, the first I'm, part? Us. Uh, a long, a long. Merrily we roll along. Yeah. Is that made into a movie? Okay. Merrily we roll. There's along. something about merrily we roll. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. That's the beginning of our other one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. There's something about merrily we roll along. Okay. That's so good. Okay. One more last reading. And I, th- I think I'm tapped. Okay. On this one. There's something about merrily we roll along. Uh, oh, wait. Walk home. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. I, you, I'm writing too fast. Okay. There's something about merrily we roll a long walk home alone. You are a lonely. You are here. Come the little mermaid of on normal people like us. <laughs> there it is. I love it. Coming like to us a streamer Facebook. near you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I mean, way to go out with a splash, right? Thank you. I love the title game. Yeah. You can play it over text, too. Oh, can we? Oh, wait. You know, I've I've lost friends over Wordle and oh, that other word so game. No. <laughs> so many friends, uh, at least two. Okay. I feel like I'm signing your yearbook. Have a great summer. <laughs> oh, yeah. So my we daughter are too had good a yearbook to be forgot- signing. Forgotten. <laughs> yeah. She had this she had this yearbook and all these kids are signing hags. And I was like, well, that's not very nice, is it? She's like, Mom, it's have a great summer. I was like, oh uh-huh. good thing I don't have a yearbook. Yeah. That's so In- slay. Oh, you know, I wonder if that'll still be the thing by the time we come back. Namaste. I'm making Aww. the t-shirt. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was a blast. Right. And uh, I'll see you next season. Alrighty. Love you. Love you. Love you.